documentary filmmaking is a service, not necessarily to the truth, it should be, but not always, but even if not quite the truth, but more a laser lined one perspective view of the truth that kind of comes from a place of bias. At the very least, documentary filmmaking should be coming at it from a place of nonfiction narratives. Meaning, I don't expect my documentaries to be spinning me a yarn, but I do expect them to be telling a story. Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today I'm going to be tackling a documentary that was requested by patron Tuan Strong, who wanted me to take a look and review the 2015 movie, the Nightmare, directed by Rodney Asher, who's also responsible for the horror documentary Room 237 about the production of The Shining. This is a film that basically is all about sleep paralysis and how scary that can be. It interviews eight individuals as they tell their stories of sleep paralysis throughout the course of their lifetimes. And while they're talking, also does recreations of the stories that they're telling while they're telling it. And as far as why Tuan wanted me to review this movie, he says... I'd like your take on this documentary. It wasn't what I expected, but in a good way, I suppose. Don't think I've ever seen anything similar. Well, it wasn't what I expected either, but unfortunately, I really have to admit that it wasn't in a good way for me. I love documentaries. The entire scoring system I have for my channel actually kind of gets turned on its head because I have different criteria with which to judge a nonfiction movie versus a fiction film. Uh, so yeah, the, the categories are going to change, but the uh, 25 possible points each up to a hundred possible points is going to stay the same. <sighs> Here's, I think the big problem I had about the nightmare is as far as the nightmare goes, really, as I've just described it is pretty much all there is eight individuals telling the stories of their lifetime with sleep paralysis and the idea of waking up but not being able to move and having hallucinatory effects and generally waking up in kind of a halfway limbo, not quite fugue, not quite uh, disassociated, but just generally almost living a nightmare before actually waking up fully. And then the recreations that are happening while they're telling the tale. Um, as far as something that I think would make a decent YouTube series, yeah, I think it was fine. In terms of something that would actually make for an interesting hour and a half long documentary, not quite so much. Something where you're actually just taking these stories, telling them and doing recreations visually alongside to kind of bring them to life for the audience. Um, yeah, I can see doing like a video and then having a playlist of them uploaded to a channel. But when it comes to a documentary, I think that it deserves a little bit more than that. Documentary filmmaking is a service, not necessarily to the truth, it should be, but not always. But even if not quite the truth, but more a laser lined one perspective view of the truth that kind of comes from a place of bias, at the very least, documentary filmmaking should be coming at it from a place of nonfiction narratives. Meaning, I don't expect my documentaries to be spinning me a yarn, but I do expect them to be telling a story. And for the life of me, after I started kind of watching the 2015 movie, The Nightmare, and the first 10, 15 minutes of it passed, I was really hoping for something more. Just something, anything more. And it just really didn't deliver. What I wanted more than anything else was to get the damn camera out of the f***ing rooms. Stop interviewing these folks. I'm Interesting individuals, I have nothing against them. But rather than interview eight people as they're telling these stories and you're doing the visual uh, recreations of them, maybe have it whittled down to four instead. And instead of just telling their stories, actually, you know, have them tell their stories as they're kind of going through this journey of discovery of sleep paralysis. Have the camera follow them around as they engage in sleep studies, as they talk to doctors and specialists and even spiritual leaders, the leaders of their particular church or a Reiki master or anything along those lines. Something to kind of follow along with what sleep paralysis is, how it's affected them, and what the paths are moving forward. Even if there are no answers to be found, I think asking the questions and following them along is an important part of the storytelling process which a documentary should be adhering to. Speak to their mothers and their fathers and their spouses and their partners and talk to the people that may have been witnessing them have the sleep paralysis and how it's affected their combined lives and what the individuals may be like from an outsider's perspective. Let's get some other people in on this. Let's get some perspective. Let's get something going beyond just these eight people 
telling a nightmare. Because I got to say, at the 15 minute mark, I was really hoping there would be something else. At the halfway point, I was just starting to get bored to tears. And by the time it ended, I was just absolutely thrilled to be seeing end credits. It just wasn't enough to sustain my interest and it certainly didn't tell me anything. This was a competently shot, competently recreated movie that I really don't have any major complaints as far as the production value goes, but the most damning thing I can say about it is as interesting as I found sleep paralysis to be as a subject matter and invested as I was at the start of it, I know absolutely nothing nothing more now having watched this movie than I did when it started. And for a documentary, that's not great. I don't want to be throwing around the word lazy, but I really do wish this movie had shown a bit more effort. I'm not going to accuse Rodney Asher of anything, but it just felt like this was kind of phoning in a whole lot. And I don't think it's that big of an ask to treat the subject matter with enough reverence to actually do it some justice, to actually investigate and tell a story and bring the audience in on it and have a documentary that is not just people telling the stories of their nightmares, but also telling the stories of themselves as we go through this journey with them. If there are no answers to be found, if sleep paralysis is a condition that always has been and there's no cure for, then let's have that conversation. Let's show a doctor basically saying that. One thing that the individuals were talking about is their experience going to the doctor, maybe in the 80s or 90s, and having the no answers answer of you know throwing up their hands and saying, well, this is simply just the way it is, and there's nothing we, anybody can do about it, which I can get is a frustrating thing, but that was 20, 30, 40 years ago. Maybe something's changed since then. Another aspect of sleep paralysis that kind of got brought up a little bit is the idea that this is a physiological condition that could have had some major impact on massive amounts of cultural influences over the course of human history. The idea of the accounts that people have had of alien abductions where they wake up and find themselves in a position of being on a spaceship or having being taken away. Uh, being attributed to the possibility of them just simply having sleep paralysis is an interesting conversation to have. So let's have that interesting conversation. Let's talk to some historians. Let's talk to some anthropologists. Let's get out of the f***ing room and talk to some other people and bring home this storytelling of the subject matter. And the nightmare just didn't. It was satisfied doing recreations as opposed to actually telling stories. And I found it to be a terribly disappointing and honestly boring documentary. So that's my review of this film. I do appreciate Tuan bringing this one to my attention. I'm sorry I didn't see it with the same lens that you did, but it was still fascinating to watch and evaluate from a documentary point of view and just kind of really kind of critique it and figure out what it was about it that worked and didn't for me. So thank you to Tuan genuinely from the bottom of my heart for bringing the 2015 nightmare onto my docket. And thank you for watching this video. What are your thoughts? If you've seen this documentary, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have sleep paralysis, I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's something that I've never actually experienced and I'm very fascinated by it. I have the utmost respect and sympathy for the individuals that have had to go through this nightmare. The only thing I can really say is I wish you had a documentary that did it a little more service than this. So thank you very much for joining. I'll talk to you all soon. Remember next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted. Uh